Welcome back to SuperCloud 22. This is an open community event and it's dedicated to tracking the future of cloud in the 2020s. SuperCloud is a term that we use to describe an architectural abstraction layer that hides the underlying complexities of the individual cloud primitives and APIs and creates a common experience for developers and users, irrespective of where data is physically stored or on which cloud platform it lives. We're now going to explore the nuances of going to market in a world where data architectures span on premises across multiple clouds and are increasingly stretching out to the edge. Paula Hansen is the president and chief revenue officer at Altrix. And the reason we asked her to join us for SuperCloud 22 is because first of all, Altrix is a company that is building a form of super cloud in our view. If you have data, in a bunch of different places and you need to pull in different data sets together, you might want to filter it or blend it, or cleanse it, shape it, enrich it with other data, analyze it, report it out to your colleagues. Altrix allows you to do that and automate that, that life cycle. And in our view is working to break down the data silos across clouds, hence super cloud. Now the other reason we invited Paula to the program is because She's a rock star female in tech, and since day one at theCUBE, we've celebrated great women in tech, and in this case, a woman of data, Paula Hansen. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Dave. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. Okay, we're going to focus on customers, their challenges, and going to market in this cross-cloud, multi-cloud, super-cloud world. First, Paula, what's changing in your view in the way that customers are innovating with data in the 2020s? Well, I think we've all learned very clearly over these last two years that the global pandemic has altered life and business as we know it. And now we're uh, in a, an interesting time from a macroeconomic perspective as well. And so what we've seen is that every company in every industry has had to pivot and think about how they meet redefined customer expectations and an ever evolving competitive landscape. Uh, there really isn't an industry that wasn't reshaped in some way over the last couple of years. And uh, we've been fortunate to work with companies uh, all in all industries that have adapted to this ever-changing environment by leveraging Alteryx to help accelerate their digital transformations. Uh, companies know that they need to unlock the full potential of their data to be able to move quickly, to pivot, and to um, respond to their customers' needs, as well as uh, manage their businesses uh, most efficiently. So I think nothing tells that story better than sharing a customer example with you, Dave. We love uh, to share stories of, of our very innovative customers. And so the one that I'll share with you today in regards to this is Delta Airlines, who we're all very familiar with. And of course, Delta's goal is to always keep their airplanes in the air, flying passengers um, and getting people to uh, their destinations efficiently. So they focus on the maintenance of their aircraft as a necessary part uh, of running their business. And they need to manage their maintenance stops and the maintenance of their uh, aircrafts very efficiently and effectively. So we work with them. Uh, they leverage our platform to automate all the processes for their air, aircraft maintenance centers. And so they've built out a, a fully automated reporting system on our platform, leveraging tons of data. And this gives their service managers and their aircraft technicians foresight into what's happening with their uh, scheduling and their maintenance processes. So this ensures that they've got the right technicians uh, in the service center when the aircrafts land and that everything uh, across that process is fully in place. And previously because of data silos and just complexity of data, uh, this process would have taken them many, many hours in each independent service center. And now leveraging Alteryx and the power of analytics and uh, bringing all the data together, those centers can do this process in just minutes um, and get their planes uh, back in the air efficiently and, and um, delivering on their promises to their customers. So uh, that's just one of many examples that we have in terms of the way the Alteryx um, analytics automation helps customers in, in this new age uh, and helping to really unlock the power of their data. You know, Paul, that's an interesting example because in, in a previous world I, I, life, I worked with some airlines and, and people maybe don't realize this, but 
aircraft maintenance is the mission critical application for, for carriers. It's not it the booking system because you know <laughs> we've also we've been there before. We show you if there's a problem with your booking, or sometimes you know the, 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 it's unfortunate, but people, you know, they 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 get debooked. But the aircraft maintenance is the one that matters the most, and that keeps you know planes in the air. So we hear all the time. You just mentioned it about data silos and how pro problematic they are. So specifically, yeah. how are you seeing customers thinking about busting the the data silos? Yeah, that's right. It's a it's a big topic right now, because companies realize that um, business processes that they run their business with um, is very cross functional in nature and requires data across uh, every department in the enterprise. And you can't keep data locked in in one department. So if you think of business processes like pay to procure or quote to cash, these are business processes that. Um, companies in every industry run their business, and that requires them to get data uh, from multiple departments and bring all of that data together seamlessly to make the best business decisions that they can make. So um, what our platform does is, and is really well known for, is being very easy uh, for users, number one, and then number two, being really great at getting access to data quickly and easily um, from all those data silos, really regardless of where it is. We talk about being everywhere. And when we say that, we mean whether it's on-prem in your legacy applications and databases, or whether it's in the cloud with, um, of course, all the multiple cloud platforms and modern cloud data warehouses. Uh, regardless of where it is, we have the ability to bring that data together across hundreds of different data sources, um, bring it together to help drive um, you know, insights and ultimately help our customers make better decisions, uh, take action and deliver on the business outcomes um, that they all are, are trying to drive within their respective industries. Now, and what's, oh, yeah, please, go ahead. Please carry on. Well, I was just going to say that what I do think has um, really sort of a tipping point in the last six months in particular is that executives themselves um, are really demanding of their organizations this democratization of data and the breaking down of the silos and empowering all of the um, employees across their enterprise, regardless of how sophisticated they are with analytics, um, to participate in the analytic opportunity. So we've seen some really cool things of late where executives, CEOs, chief financial officers, chief data officers are sponsoring um, you know, events within their organizations to break down these silos and uh, encourage their employees to come together on this democratization opportunity of democratization of data and analytics. And uh, there's a shortage of data scientists on top of this. So there's no way that uh, you're going to be able to hire enough data scientists to make sense of all this data running around your enterprise. So uh, we believe uh, with our platform, we empower people regardless of their skill set. And so we see executives sponsoring these hackathons within their environments uh, to bring together people, to brainstorm and ideate on use cases, to share examples of how they leverage our platform and um, leverage uh, the data within their organization to make better decisions. And it's really, it's really quite cool. Uh, companies like Stanley Black & Decker, Ingersoll Rand, uh, Inchcape PLC, these are all companies that the executive team has, has sponsored these hackathon events and uh, seen really powerful things come out of it. As an example, uh, Ingersoll Rand uh, sponsored their Alteryx hackathon with all of their data workers across various different functions where the, the data exists. And they focused on you know, both top line revenue use cases as well as bottom line uh, efficiency cases. And one of the outcomes was uh, a use case that helped with their distribution center in North America and, and bring all the data together across uh, their various applications to reduce the amount of um, over ordering and under ordering of parts and more effectively manage uh, their inventory within that distribution center. So really cool to see the, this is now a, an executive level board level a conversation. Very cool. I mean, the hackathon, really bringing people together for, for collaboration. A couple of things that you said I want to comment on. I mean, again, one of the reasons why we invited you guys to come on is 
when you think about on-prem data, and it, anybody who follows the Cube and my breaking analysis program knows we're big fans of Jamak Dagani's concept of data mesh. And data mesh is supposed to be inclusive. It doesn't matter if it's an S3 bucket, an Oracle database, a data warehouse, a data lake. That's just yeah. a node on the data mesh, data mesh. And so it should be inclusive and, and, and super cloud should include on-prem data to the extent that you can make that experience consistent. We have a lot of technical sessions here at SuperCloud 22. We're focusing now on go-to-market and, and the ecosystem, and we live in a world of multiple partners, exploding mm -hmm. ecosystems, and, and a lot of times it's co-opetition. So, Paula, when you joined Alteryx, you brought a proven go-to-market discipline to the company, alignment with the customer, playbooks, best practices, sales, et cetera, and we've seen the results. I mean, it's a big reason why you know, Mark Anderson and the board promoted you to president, you know, just after 10 months. Summarize how you approached the situation at Alteryx when you joined last spring. Yeah, I think first we, we were really intentional about what part of the market, what type of enterprises get the most benefit from the innovation that we deliver. And it's really clear that it's large enterprises, right? That the more complex a company is, uh, most likely the more data they have, uh, and oftentimes the more uh, decentralized that data is. And they're also really all trying to figure out how to remain competitive by leveraging that data. So. First, the first thing we did was, you know, be very intentional that we're focused on the enterprise and building out all of the capability uh, required to be able to serve the enterprise. Of course, uh, central to all of that is, is having a platform capability because enterprises require that. So with Suresh Vital, our chief product officer, he's been uh, fantastic in building out an end-to-end -end analytic platform that serves a wide range of analytic capabilities to a wide range of users. And then of course has this you know, flexibility to operate um, both on-prem and in the cloud, uh, which is really important because we see, we see this hybrid environment and this multi-cloud environment being something that uh, is important to our customers. The second thing that I was really focused on was uh, understanding how do you have those conversations with customers uh, when they all are in um, maybe different types of backgrounds. So the way that you work with a business analyst in the office of finance or supply chain or sales and marketing is different than the way that you serve a data scientist or a data engineer in IT. Uh, the way that you talk to a business owner who wants you know, not to really understand the workflow level of data, but wants to understand the insights of data that's a different conversation. When you want to uh, have a conversation of analytics for all or democratization of analytics at the executive level with the chief data officer or a CIO, that's a whole different conversation. And so we've built very specific sales plays to um, be able to have those conversations, bring the relevant information to the relevant person so that um, we're really uh, making sure that we explain the value proposition of the platform fully understand their world, their language, and can work with them to, uh, to deliver uh, the value to them. And then the third thing that we did was really um, heavily invest in our partnerships. And, and you referenced this, Dave, right? It's a, it's a broad ecosystem out there. And we know that we have to integrate into that broad data ecosystem uh, and, and be a good partner to serve our customers. So We've invested both in technology integration as well as go-to-market strategies with uh, cloud data warehouse uh, companies like Snowflake and Databricks or um, RPA companies like UiPath and Blue Prism, as well as a wide range of other you know, application and all of the cloud platforms because that's what our customers expect from us. Uh, so that's been an, a really important sort of third pillar of our strategy and making sure uh, that from a go-to-market perspective, we understand uh, where we fit in the ecosystem and how we collectively deliver on value to our joint customers. So that's super helpful. I mean, what I'm taking away from this is you didn't come to it with a generic playbook. Frank Slootman always talks about situational leadership. You assess the situation yeah. and applied that. Uh, and a great example of you know, partners, you know, Snowflake and Databricks, is sort of yeah. opposites, but trying to solve similar problems. So you've got to be in inclusive of all that. So, so we're trying to sort of squint through this, Paul, and say, okay, are there nuances and best practices you know, beyond some of the, the things that you just described that are unique to what we call super cloud? Are there, 
Are there observations you can make with respect to what's different in this post-isolation economy, specifically in managing remote employees and, and of course remote partners working with these complex ecosystems and the rise of this multi-cloud world? Is, is it different or is it same wine, new bottle? Well, I think it's, it's, uh both common uh, from uh, the on-prem or, you know, uh, pre-cloud world, but there's also some differences as well. So, you know, what's common is that uh, companies still expect, uh, you know, innovation from us and still want us to be able to serve a wide range of um, skill sets. So uh, our belief is that regardless of the skill set that you have, you can participate in the analytics opportunity for your company and unlocking the potential of your data. So we've been very focused um, since our inception to build out a platform that really serves this wide range uh, of capabilities uh, across the enterprise space. What's perhaps you know, changed more or uh, continues to evolve in this cloud world is just uh, the flexibility that's required. You have to be everywhere. You have to be able to serve users wherever they are um, and, and um, be able to live in a multi-cloud or super cloud world. So when I think of cloud, I think it just unlocks a whole uh, bigger opportunity for Alteryx and for uh, companies uh, that want to um, become uh, analytic leaders because now you have users all over the globe, many of them you know, looking for web-based analytic solutions. And of course, these enterprises are all in various places on their journey to cloud and they want a partner and a platform that operates in all of those environments, which is, which is what we do at Alteryx. So um, I think it's an exciting time. I think that it's still very early in the analytic uh, market and what companies are gonna do to leverage their data to drive their transformation. And we're really excited to be a part of it. So last question is, you know, I, I said up front, we always like to celebrate women in tech. Uh, how'd you get into tech? I mean, you've got a background, you've got a, you know, somewhat of a technical background, you know, b being, you know, technical sales. Uh, and then of course, you know, rose up you know, throughout your career uh, and now have a, have a leadership position. I called you a w woman of data. Uh, how'd you get into it? How, how, where'd you find the love of data? Give us the, the background and help us inspire some of the young women out there. Oh, well, but I'm super passionate about inspiring young women and, and uh, thinking about the future next generation uh, of women that can participate in technology and in data specifically. I grew up loving math and science. I uh, went to school and got a, an electrical engineering degree, but my passion around technology hasn't been uh, just around technology for technology's sake. My passion around technology is What's, what can it enable? What can it do? What are the outcomes um, that technology makes possible? And that's why data is so attractive because data makes amazing things possible, right? We shared, I shared some of those examples with you earlier, um, but it, not only can we have effect with data in businesses and enterprise, but governments globally now are, are realizing um, the, the ability for data to really have broad societal impact. And so uh, I think that that speaks to women uh, many times, right? Is that what, what does technology enable? What are the outcomes? What are the stories uh, and examples that we can all share and be inspired by and feel um, good and, and inspired to be a part of uh, a broader opportunity that technology and data specifically enables. So that's what drives me. And those are the conversations that I have with the women uh, that I speak with in, in all ages, all, all the way down to K through 12 to inspire them to have a, a career in technology. Awesome, you know, the more people in STEM, the better, and the more women in our industry, the better. Pa Paula Hansen, thanks so much for coming in the program. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Okay, keep it right there for more coverage from SuperCloud 22. You're watching theCUBE.